there's this new law that will benefit Tesla a little bit and today overall the companies that sell EVs are not doing great relatively speaking Tesla is doing better than many of them today. Previously it was believed that maybe the Tesla Semi would not be sold in Australia because it would be about this much too wide. But this new law is going to change that rule that would have prevented the semi from being sold in Australia. However, there's possibly one more hurdle. While the hurdle for the Tesla semi's width has now been removed, it's not clear whether the truck's centrally mounted driver's seat would comply with Australian design rules. Troy says, I'm working on EPS calculations for Q3. I'll tweet it on the 17th of October. So one day before the actual earnings call. He says, I'm calculating unit sales and average selling price for each trim level in each region. Also, I calculate leases and direct sales separately as Tesla does. This requires keeping track of cars leased in the last 12 quarters. Tesla now does quite a bit of inventory discounting overall, which makes it a bit harder to carefully and accurately track the average selling price. Yesterday I reported how Tesla is not really doing inventory discounts in the US anymore and today I wanted to check if discounts changed and uh, where's the inventory link? I don't see it here. I just switched from US to Canada. Here I can explore inventory, but if I go to the US site, it doesn't give me that option. It doesn't even show me inventory. Now, why do you think Tesla would do that? Tesla led all automakers in brand loyalty in the first half of 2023 as per an analysis of new vehicle registration data by S&P Global Mobility. The electric vehicle maker's loyalty rate was listed at 68.4%, which was notably higher than the industry average of 50.6%. And when the Cybertruck comes out, that number is going to increase even further because right now Model Y owners, when they want to upgrade, there's nothing that Tesla really can offer to them within a reasonable price range. The jump in price from the Model Y to a Model X is just a bit too big. We got the wholesale number from China, which is local sales plus exports, and that number is 74,000. Here's what the whole quarter looks like. Obviously, Tesla was switching to the refresh Model 3 during this quarter, so the decrease is expected. U4, however, is expected to be pretty good. Tesla's net interest income continues to compound exponentially thanks to the Fed's rapid rate hikes. It now stands at $210 million per quarter and will likely be significantly higher in Q3 as the company poured another $5 billion into such money market instruments. It's likely Tesla's net interest income surpasses the company's income from regulatory credits in Q3 for the first time in companies history. And Gary says Tesla investing cash at 4 to 5 percent pre-tax is a poor use of shareholder capital especially with the internal rate of return on buying back stock at 12.3 percent after tax uh, based on his numbers. Gary's logic is if you use Tesla's money to buy more Tesla stock then overall Tesla stock will go higher. I think also where you stand on share buybacks depends on how diversified you are and how much of Tesla's stock is in your portfolio. Because if you are really concentrated and a large portion of your portfolio is Tesla stock, well, what happens if something goes wrong? Let's assume that Tesla needs to raise a lot of money because it just spent all of its money buying back its own stock. Well, uh, I would expect something like this which is exactly what Rivian <laughs> basically just did. They just raised more money. The stock dropped more than 20% in one single day. And there's a heated exchange between Tesla stock investors. He responded to Gary by saying, you're preaching to the choir. Unfortunately, most of the Tesla stock faithful did not understand share buybacks and refused to. But with Alessandra, who, by the way, used to be a money manager years ago, Next, you call us deplorable or what? How about we understand the following investment in Dojo is going to cost multiple billions in the very short term and Elon, uh, he can put us through some crises occasionally and if you read the biography, he likes the drama, he's addicted to it and that's when he feels the most alive and that's then he performs the best. So, 
yeah, I think uh, I do like the idea of having some cash. Alessandro also points out that global outlook is still shady. We all understand that a share of buyback will have a limited positive effect on the stock price and would then advise to do treasury buybacks. But it is not a priority for us that's different than the faithful not understanding or refusing to. About a year ago, when Tesla stock was close to $200 or something like that, Alexandra was quite strongly uh, pro share buybacks. Seems like uh, she does not advocate share buybacks as strongly now. Doesn't seem like she minds share buybacks, but looks like to me uh, she does prefer no share buybacks at the moment, perhaps. Think Gary says buybacks are only after all Tesla capital expenditures and internal growth initiatives, gigafactories, dojo, bots, etc. are funded. Buybacks are instead of letting cash build up at 4 to 5% pre-tax. Now it's also important to look at Tesla's cash and while it is growing, it is growing relatively slowly currently and Tesla is about to expand even faster than before with the factory in Mexico, with a factory potentially in India. Elon is also well aware that doing a buyback would help Tesla stock, so it is in his best interest to do what is best for Tesla stock in the long term. So if it is really all that great, then Elon would already be pushing for it. But Elon knows exactly how much money Tesla will need for expansion and what he's thinking in terms of further expansion. So I think it is best to maybe ask him, should we do a buyback? Because this disagreement is not about do buybacks help increase Tesla stock price. They obviously do help increase the stock price. The disagreement is about how much money does Tesla need to invest in its future? And I think Elon has the most accurate answer to that question. Because really, it all depends on him. So I would much rather have someone make this decision who is going to benefit from the Tesla stock price in the long term instead of someone who is actively managing people's money and is judged on yearly performance. At the start of October 2023, the US had 47 days of used vehicle inventory with an average mileage of 69,800 miles and selling at average price of $26,700. Meanwhile, the Model 3 can be purchased for $31,500 brand new after federal tax credits and well under $30,000 after state incentives in many cases, but sure, affordability, says James. That comment sort of almost implies that every single vehicle that is used is going to be of the same size uh, as the Model 3 is, but you just look a little bit, here's a Camry, it's a 2015 model, $13,000, how many miles does it have? 49,000 miles. How long do Toyotas last? You can probably go another 150,000 miles, no problem. Of course, the car is nowhere near as fun as the Model 3, it's pretty boring, but to many it will be a pretty comfortable car. Nowhere near as good as the Model 3 though. Look at what Edmunds, Director of Insights, just said. He's talking about the Saba truck here. That vehicle is technically in a very different class than either of Rivian's offerings. It is far more reasonable to assume Saba truck will become the number one crush shaft vehicle on Edmunds once it launches. Tesla has just sent out an ownership experience survey. Questions include about how satisfied you are with certain features, support, and more. It also has questions like, what do you enjoy least about your Tesla vehicle? It also asks, how tech savvy are you? About 15 years ago, I read this book and it wrote about two companies. One company supposedly was doing all right and the other company was doing really great. One company asked its customers, why do you buy our product and then it tried to improve its product based on that customer feedback. The other company asked the people that were not buying from them, why are you not buying from us? What can we change? Guess which company supposedly was a lot more successful? The one that asked why are you not buying our product because that includes people that literally are not buying your product yet instead of asking the people that already bought which also probably means they will keep buying from you anyway. I think what Tesla is doing is useful. I think it would be even more useful if Tesla asked people that, let's say, signed up for uh, the email list but never bought a vehicle from Tesla, why are you not buying vehicles from us? Because I suspect, for example, 
Most Tesla owners are relatively tech savvy, but the people that are not buying Teslas, they probably don't see that as an advantage. The tests are so techy. It's actually really easy to learn everything about uh, Tesla vehicles, but if people don't even give Tesla a try, then they will not buy. I'm just speculating here, of course. Maybe the tech is not a reason at all why some people would not even want to consider a Tesla, but if we don't ask people that are not buying Teslas, how do we know for sure? For example, one of um, my older family members, around 60, I uh, thought that Teslas are perhaps a little hard to use because they're techy. But then I let him drive and <laughs> he was mind blown. He's like, this is the best car I have ever driven. And after that drive, he was no longer intimidated by any tech from Tesla. This could be just the camera angle, but the Cybertruck does seem to be quite a bit wider than the Model Y. When I drive, it's mostly just in the city, so I'm curious how much more difficult would it be to drive a Cybertruck compared to a Model 3 or Y in a city. That new Cybertruck account that I reported on earlier has just tweeted. I don't know what it tweeted, but a lot of Tesla accounts are retweeting it. I'm not really sure why. The post actually got 600,000 views. Wow. Xpeng G6 is being touted as directly competing with the Model Y. Here's what it looks like. Here's what it looks like from the front. Ray posted the specs of the car here as well. And it starts at about 29,000 US dollars. But will it be able to compete with Tesla actually? I wish them luck. If you look at BYD Seal, which is a direct competitor to the Model 3, at first, uh, it was actually fairly successful and then Tesla cut prices and the sales collapsed and only recovered once Tesla stopped selling the Model 3 basically. So yeah, it's going to be difficult for Xpeng. In the meantime, Hyundai wants to sell this factory for $340 million. Probably we will see a lot of this in the coming months and years from Legacy Auto. If a lot of these Legacy Automakers don't get themselves together, they will see a lot of red days like this X-Punk today actually is down 12% as I'm recording. Toyota delivered 4,221 battery electric vehicles in the US in Q3, so not many. Tesla does not release its exact US delivery numbers, but globally Tesla delivered about 100 times more EVs in Q3 than Toyota did in the US. NIO has now completed 30 million global battery swaps, further proving the process's viability. That is very capital intensive though, and yeah, the stock is down 86.78% from the top. And as batteries get better over time and charging speeds improve, in the long term, I don't think that is going to be necessary at all. Until the technology gets to that point, there's certainly some use case for this, but when you design a vehicle like that, you will also have to make a few compromises because you have to make it easy uh, to make the battery replaceable. This, I think, is just mostly going to be a niche thing in the long term. In the medium term, it could turn out to be pretty useful for many consumers, especially if you live in an apartment and you can't really charge at home. But once you can charge your battery to 80% in 10 minutes eventually, or seven minutes or eight minutes, yeah, I think that's not going to make much sense anymore. Rivian's missteps last week were another gut punch for investors, says Wedbush, uh, which is Dan Ives, really. Rivian stock slid 2.2% pre-market Monday after Wedbush cut its price target by 22% to reflect loss of confidence in management. That's because they raised money last week. Bloomberg Intelligence estimates that Lucid is set to lose 338,000 for every vehicle it makes this year. I saw some Tesla stock bulls say that Tesla's price cuts are not hurting the competition, but I think it is definitely hurting the competition. I mean, if Lucid is already losing so much money and Tesla cut it, its prices even further, it takes all of the hope away, or a lot of it, that Lucid could eventually make any money. Today, Lucid is dropping again, and it actually reached an all-time low. It is now down 91% from its previous peak. But hey, some people say Tesla's price cuts have nothing to do with Lucid not doing 
Great. A new analysis by independent energy research firm has concluded that battery-powered electric vehicles are simply better for the environment than diesel or gasoline cars, even if the grid is dominated by fossil fuels. What a groundbreaking discovery that every single Tesla stock investor has already figured out maybe 10 years ago. World EV sales now equal 18% of world auto sales if you include plug-in hybrids, if you only include fully battery electric vehicles, that number is 13% and that number will continue to grow and accelerate as years pass by. That is inevitable. 4,000 UAW members at Mack Trucks, which is basically Volvo, have voted to reject a tentative agreement and will strike at 7 a.m. on Monday. So the strike must have just started. That is not great for Volvo. Here's a really interesting chart to look at. This is currency used for global payments through the SWIFT banking system and you can see that uh, USD has been going up actually this year very noticeably. Uh, Euros have been going down though. Relatively to other countries, for now US still remains very strong. And Tesla just did this live stream, it's a seven minute long live stream where they showed us the Cybertruck, no new details really, it's just the Cybertruck driving through these difficult roads. I received more good feedback about this video, about another big mistake I see Tesla investors make. It's exclusively available on Patreon. If you are a Patreon supporter of mine, make sure to watch that video. By joining my Patreon, you will get access to how much I think it is fair to pay per Tesla share each year between 2023 and 2033. If you sign up for the investor tier of support, you will also get my valuation model of Tesla stock with a 45 minute video walkthrough. And YouTube says you should watch this video next, but if you haven't finished watching that discussion about the feature with Elon Musk, watch this one first. My name is Matt Postius. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.